I've spent my whole life surfing competitively and following a tour schedule. I was lucky enough to see a lot of the world, but I didn't get to dive deep into different cultures until now. Now that I'm on a tour, I've decided to make my own, and I'm the only one on it. This time, it's not about competing. It's about exploring, finding new waves, meeting inspiring women, experiencing different ways of life, and making my own rules as I go. Morocco, Casbars and Camels, hey jeans and Mint Tea, home to legendary cities such as Casablanca, Marrakesh and Tangiers. Morocco has long served as a gateway into Africa for much of the world. At its narrowest point, the Strait of Gibraltar leaves only 13 kilometres or 8 miles between Spain and Morocco. And understandably, the country has a colourful culture that celebrates both global and Arabic influences. Throughout the years, Morocco has earned a reputation for attracting artists, writers, musicians and other generally adventurous types. So perhaps it comes no surprise that it was only a matter of time before surfing took a root in the North African country. I'm Laura Enova and welcome to Morocco. Salam. <laughs> it's loud, it's chaotic and it's pink. So pretty. It's not Morocco's oldest or biggest city, but Marrakesh never fails to entertain. We're on our way to the town centre. We're going to go find some, uh, some tagine. We stayed for a day inside the Medina, which is the oldest part of the city, but despite best efforts, sense of direction failed us entirely. Send us a sign. Which way? Oh, this way. Are you that way? This way? <laughs> you must trust your instincts to lead you to the best tagine. Starting off in Marrakesh, we'll be making our way south towards the coast of Agadir, where we'll be meeting up with the country's four-time female surfing champion, as well as other women who are pushing back against tradition. We'll be checking in with the country's young female skate scene and making a visit to the female-run Argon Cooperative. And of course, while we're at it, we'll ride some camel, get lost in some dunes, and eat plenty of tagine. Because hey, we're in Morocco. In 1994, His Majesty King Mohammed VI helped to found the first surf club in Rabat, located in northern Morocco. His recognition of surfing as a respectable sport helped vastly to nurture Morocco's growing surf culture. Word had gotten out that Morocco was full of waves, sun, and thousands of miles of unexplored coastlines. We were meeting with local surfer Miriam El Gadoum, Morocco's four-time female surfing champion. Miriam was born and raised by the sea, yet it wasn't until she was 11 years old that she stood up on her first wave. I saw one of my friends, like he was surfing with his board, and I see, yeah, I can try it on a body board. I feel that feeling, like when you stand and you ride the wave, like I said, I cannot stop surfing. I cannot imagine my life without surfing. Miriam comes from a traditional Muslim family. When she first started surfing, she's told me more than a few eyebrows are raised. I was the only girl with the boys in the beginning. No way, that's yeah. how I was with my um, full riders club. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. in the beginning it was hard for me. They gave me a, like, a, like a nickname, which is Muhammad. <laughs> and <laughs> I think it was horrible. But, but at the same time, like, it was a good memory with the, with the, with the yeah. boys. Yeah. <laughs> We ride Jamel to check the surf. Well, there's F. <laughs> Miriam's friend Hassid met us at the beach one morning with two camels in tow. And they were giant. Apparently, they can reach speeds of up to 40 miles per hour. But thankfully, ours stayed at more of a walking pace. 
is your home surf spot, yeah. right? How old were you when you started surfing here? 11 years. 11? Yeah. Jeez, I'm picking up speed over here. <laughs> <laughs> Morocco has over 1,200 miles of coastline, so it's no surprise that the country has nearly every kind of wave imaginable. During our visit, we didn't score any serious swell, but we had a lot of fun making the most of what was around. Wanting to find out more about women creating positive change in Morocco, Miriam took us to visit the Ladies of Agarom, a female-run cooperative tucked in the hills of Agadir. This is only what we need to make argan oil. There is cosmetic argan oil. It's very good for the hair, very good for the skin, it's true, but it's also good for the health. I mean that it's eatable. So everything in this shop is made from the garden we just got the tour around, and it's made all by the women that work here. It's, it's an uh, all-women's collective. We've got some argan oil cooking, very healthy to take a spoonful a day. In Morocco, I eat tagine khudra. The Sahara is one of the world's largest deserts. Crossing from peak to peak, the sand scorched our feet and the temperature got about 20 degrees hotter. But once we made it to the top, it was completely worth it. Miriam took us up to the new skate park above Tagazut. Here we met Faiza and Wafa, two of Miriam's best friends. The girls are sweet, beautiful, and absolutely rip. Nervous. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big camera. So <laughs> you know, when you started skating, how yeah. old were you, and and how did you get into it? Well, I said like uh, me and Faiza, we've been friends for since like we were seven years or something. We started skateboarding, we were just like so bored. Yeah. Like, we tried everything, we couldn't like find something that really suits us. So, and you were street skating for a while, yeah? Yeah, like... exactly. So, because we don't really have uh, lots of good skate parks, uh, so we've been skating street. family and stuff, were they always supportive? <laughs> <laughs> At start, no way. I mean, imagine my parents didn't want to buy me a bike oh, because yeah. they were afraid that I was gonna get hurt. Okay. So the day that I came out with a skateboard, they were like, no way. <laughs> this is the last time you're doing this, blah, blah, blah. I think when they saw that I will just do it anyway, yeah. they just stopped bothering me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. But it was eye-opening to remember that this was Morocco and that these were young Muslim women outliving cultural stereotypes of what women can and can't do. If Morocco has taught me one thing, it has taught me that the next generation of Moroccan women can look like Miriam, like Faiza, like Wafa, and that Morocco can still look like a field of argan trees, like a busy sook. It can be all of that, all at once. Salam, bonjour, hello. Morocco, I know it won't be long before I'm back. Thank you.